Good morning. Today is December 13th, and we're going to start with a daily reflection from the Old Testament. Or on the Old Testament. It's on. Um, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Joel 2.28 As Joseph Smith was praying to God in September 1823, an angelic messenger surrounded by light appeared in his room. The angel spoke of a book written on plates of gold that was deposited in a hill in the state of New York. Those plates, when translated, became the Book of Mormon, another testament of Jesus Christ. The angel quoted to Joseph various verses and prophecies from the Bible, among which was Joel 2:28 through 32 the prophet Joel prophesied of the time in which we live, a time when the Lord would pour out his spirit upon all flesh, a time when prophecy would increase in the land uh, and Zion would prosper. Since the restoration of the gospel, the spirit of the Lord has inspired people in the world to accomplish things almost unbelievable to those who behold them all in preparation for the Savior's return. Okay. Today is Malachi chapter 1, verses 8 to 14. And it talks more about offerings. Um, we talked a little bit about it yesterday, and um, we're going to do the side-by-side -side today. Um... But there was, it talks about <clears throat> bringing the blind and bringing the sick and um, how if you have a, it says, but cursed be the deceiver which hath in his flock a male and voweth and sacrificeth unto the Lord a corrupt thing. So he's saying, if you have a male without blemish who is the perfect for an offering, the one that you have given so many times before, but you bring the sickly and the lame and the blind and the, you know, not the the best of, not the best of what you have, the, the, the worst of what you have, the most contemptible of what you have and you bring it to the Lord, is he going to be happy? What are you doing? I'm doing my video. Go. <laughs> Hi, honey. I'm doing my video. Go. I want to be. I want to be quiet. Okay, be quiet then. All right, but one of the verses, verse eight, I really liked. Um, it says, "And if if ye offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And if ye offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Now." Offer it now unto thy governor. Will he be pleased with it or accept thy person? So he's saying, if you have these sick things and you're offering them to me, I, I dare you to go offer it to the governor, to the prince, to the king, and see if he accepts it at all. Sit down or go away. What are you doing? Um, and it's it's kind of true. What are you offering the Lord? If you offered it to somebody else, if you offered it to the governor, the the mayor, the the bishop, would he be accepted? Would it be accepted of him? Is what I'm trying to say. Would. Anyways, something to think about. Let's see what the side by side has to say about it. Um, do we bring honor to our Father in Heaven through our offerings? The sacrifices of the day were to involve spotless and perfect offerings without blemish. Anything less would be an affront to the memory of the perfect offering of the Son of God, the Redeemer of the world, whose atoning sacrifice was mem memorialized in the sacrificial rites of the Law of Moses. What are you doing, honey? I'm Looks like you're making a mess. The message for modern readers is the reminder that our our oblations and offerings are to be of a perfect kind, 
involving authentic and sincere reverence and the honorable spirit of faith and devotion. In that way, we should honor to our Father in heaven. In that way, we show honor to our Father in heaven. Sometimes I really can't read. Anyways, um, this reminds me of a email I read last night. Um, there's this woman who has her own online... I, you know those women who try to sell their come follow me lesson plans or whatever or their I don't it's like they try to make a business out of selling church curriculum does that make sense anyways the reason I found this woman was because I was looking for a way to study the story has a point I was looking for a way to study the general conference talks and she had uh, she had what she had the conference club and so every week she would send you an email or a sheet or a downloadable, a printable. Hey, guys, be quiet. A printable um, for a different talk, and you could study that talk in, like, I thought it would be a really good way of, like, breaking down the talk or whatever. And No, it was like a word search or something. It was, it was ridiculous. Anyways, I was like, this is ridiculous. It seems a little bit like, um priest crafts, you know, selling your religion. But anyways, uh, for some reason, I still get her emails. I never unsubscribed or whatever. But the one she sent last night was actually kind of good. It was talking about her favorite Christmas tradition and how on Christmas morning, before the family opens their presents, they do it on Christmas morning, not Christmas Eve. Before they open it all, they all kneel down together as a family and they offer a prayer of thanksgiving. Uh, a prayer of gratitude, thankful for the gifts that they have received from the Lord throughout the year. And then they take a couple of minutes and they ponder that about the gifts they've received from the Lord. And then they um, write down or they, they ponder what gift they can offer Christ in the coming year. And I thought that was really nice. I thought it was really cool. You know, our family, we do the nativity scene every uh, Christmas Eve night, and that kind of puts, you know, the emphasis on Christ. But on Christmas Day, you know, I don't think we really do anything that also puts the emphasis on Christ. Um, and so I thought it was a really great idea to, before the candy begins, before the Santa present begins, you know, we kneel down and we, we say how grateful we are for everything that we've received this year. And then, um, you know, not like a goal or whatever, but more like, um, kind of like an intentional word, a uh, word of the year, like what gift am I going to give Christ this coming year? Anyways, I thought it was a great idea. I really liked it. And that, that goes along with the offerings. What offering are we giving to Christ? Okay. Anyways, those are my thoughts for today. And now I will leave you with a prayer from a diary of prayer. It is the 13th. And this is from Christina Rossetti. Before the beginning, thou hast foreknown the end. Before the birthday, the deathbed was seen of thee. Cleanse what I cannot cleanse, mend what I cannot mend. O Lord, all merciful, be merciful unto me. While the end is drawing near, I know not mine end. But birth I recall not, my death I cannot foresee. O God, wise to defend, wise to befriend. O Lord, all merciful, be merciful to me. I like that one. That's a good one. Did you like that one, Zachary? Yeah. What yeah. are those stickers for? It points to the prayers that I love. And I think I'm just going to read this again next year. Because we didn't get it in January. So I we missed like half the year of prayers. So I think I'm going to read it again next year. Okay, that was Malachi chapter 1, verses 8 through 14. And we do 2, 1 through 8 tomorrow. We will see you then. Bye.